So will we have an everything crash in October? And what the heck is this October effect? Well, I want to look at some things with you guys, uh, give my opinion, and uh, love to hear your opinion as well. So this is it. Um, this is the headline today. <laughs> October's record of market crashes makes it the most feared month on the financial calendar, uh, and they're calling this the October effect. So um, there is some truth to this thing, guys. Uh, this is the October effect here. And um, I want to read the definition with you and sort of why, why people talk about this sort of thing. Um, so the October effect. The October effect is a perceived market anomaly. So this is a key, perceived market anomaly, that stocks tend to decline during the month of October. The October effect is considered more of a psychological expectation, so it's all in your head, uh, than an actual phenomenon, as statistics go against theory. Uh, some investors may be nervous during October because some large historical market crashes occur during this month. So um, is this, this is true, though. 1907, 1929, and 1987, we had some big crashes. Uh, and uh, will it repeat again? Um, I want to show you guys some numbers, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, certainly, no one can read the future 100, but um, you certainly can arm yourself uh, and be prepared. So, you know, one of the things that certainly is alarming is when you see these kind of headlines. I mean, I'll read it. Uh, UK in turmoil as governments gamble to solve economic woes, fuel crisis instead. Like, I, I, I you know, if, if I'm a citizen of the uh, of uh, the UK, you know, and I'm over there and um, I'm seeing that my government's taking a gamble, <laughs> it doesn't make me feel very comfortable. And um, I always love to hear from people over in Europe and UK if, if like, how you're feeling. And I, I just don't want to see this word gamble. It's not something I want to see my government doing. I, I'd like to see my government not gambling, but uh, that's just me. And um, it's funny because uh, one of the things that we do also do on this channel, we, we track these sort of meme stock stuff. This is AMC is a good example. And the reason why we do this is because you kind of want to see sort of where regular people retail and se uh, sentiment is. And my opinion is um, we'll know the bottom of the market essentially when these kind of people lose all their money. You, you, you got to get this money out of the market. And then you say, OK, the froth is gone. The craziness is gone. Now we can get back to normalcy. Um, so these people are down 81 percent and uh, uh, their YouTubers are dropping off like flies. So we're getting closer to the bottom for real. Um, because like the biggest YouTuber for this thing, uh, just quit. And then the other one, it was, that was the trade trade dude. And then the other one, the Matt Cord dude quit, I don't know, like six months ago or something like that. So, you know, when these people start to wash out, you'll know, okay, we're getting closer to the bottom. Um, also too, if you remember this, there was a whole bunch of, uh, YouTube channels and stuff, uh, pumping up everything Kathy Wood was touching and, uh, saying, you know, oh my God, everything's going to moon. We're all going to be ridiculously rich. Right. And, and this, and I always use this article because I think it's a funny one. Um, Kathy Wood's ARK Invest predicts Bitcoin could exceed $1 million by 2030. Um, I, I, I mean, that's still seven years from now, so maybe she'll be right. But, um, you know, it, when you look back now, it just seems kind of ludicrous and, uh, it's just saying, uh, 500,000 by 2026. Um, currently Bitcoin is down, you know, 59 percent you guys see it for yourself in the past year and, and this is something I, I really want you guys to, to tune yourself to that you know i've lived these things before um the dot-com bubble uh, also lived through the 0809 crisis i'm pushing 50 you know i'm a lot older than a lot of people think and um you know for people who are jumping in the market the first time in their 20s you, you've never seen these things before and so it's kind of all new to you but i'm saying history repeats itself i've seen this stuff before um and you know when you when you see also arc is down as well 64 percent and, um, you know, these kind of things, uh, people basically start to wash out, right? They've lost all their money. There's no more money coming back into the system. And so this is sort of what we'll be signaling the bottom. So I, th I think we're getting close, to be honest. Um, exactly where the bottom is is tough because I, I have some more things to show you. But I wanted us to see how you can kind of see these patterns before, right? When essentially, the, the joke is always like when your hairdresser starts talking about, you know, buying ARC and, and your, you know, taxi driver starts talking about buying Bitcoin and then your um, you know, your janitor starts talking about, oh my God, did you buy EMC? Then you know it's usually the top and um, these people have been getting out of the market. Um, one of the things though, it's definitely been an indicator of that we've seen lately is the dollar has been showing some real strength. And I'm sure you guys know this, it's been headlines everywhere. And um, this is the dollar to the pound. It's up like 21%, it's like, right? It's, it's just been going crazy. Um, you can look at the dollar to the yen up 30%, right? <laughs> and um, you know, one of the things is um, we came to Korea, so I'm in Korea now, and uh, just because the dollar is so strong. And so, you know, I'd recommend for, for you guys, if you want to travel or you want to live abroad, now is a great time because the dollar is just so strong. Uh, how much longer it could last? is anyone's guess, um, but I don't think the dollars will just crash in a day. It's just not like that because we all know dollars are good. Who doesn't know that? And, you know, much of the world's transactions, I think it's something like 40% of the world's transactions are, are done in dollar um, because, you know, a lot of the trade in either food or energy is done in dollar and uh, countries depend on it. So it is a currency that people like, and um, I just don't think Bitcoin's going to replace dollar anytime soon. And, uh, you know, one of the things too, though, is, um, you know, why there could be more downside ahead 
as I mentioned, Tesla. And I know there's a lot of Tesla bulls out there, right? They're still pushing that thing the same way people were pushing your AMC or your ARCs or your Bitcoin. And to be fair, Tesla is a profitable company, right? They actually do make money over there. The thing is with Tesla, this past year, it's only up about 1.82%. So it's basically flat, right? So it hasn't quite crashed, but it, but it hasn't been like skyrocketing to the moon and stuff. And the thing that always gives me pause about Tesla is like when you're looking at these P ratios at 95, I mean, it's just like ludicrous numbers, right? You guys can see it for yourself, 95 PE. And, you know, the, the one of the things that, that is also kind of tell about this sort of thing is that, you know, they're still pumping out this kind of stuff. And this is the headline. And, and if you haven't seen my video on it, but uh, you can watch it. But um, essentially, Tesla is still making robots. You can, you can read this here or, or still pushing robots, I should say. Um, uh, here's the headline. Tesla's robot waves but can't walk yet <laughs> uh, Musk plans to make millions of them so it, it's it's kind of funny because um you know that when you see the companies still like kind of pushing this sort of really experimental stuff when essentially you know the the air out of the balloon is, has been coming out right yet they're still trying to keep the balloon puffed up uh essentially bubbles what i'm saying is you know it's not quite yet over um because going into recessionary environment do you think companies and just regular people are going to be like oh my god I want to buy robots. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to buy, especially in a recession. It's, it's I'm all about robots, and and it's it's um I, I you know I'm not against robots. I like robots, to be very frank. But you know he's he was pushing essentially a humanoid robot, and one of the things I thought was fascinating when, when talking to comments with you know people as I stated my opinion is you know if you're going to build robots, I would don't think the humanoid form is necessarily the best method of doing. It. You know you could do a robot with wheels right instead of legs. It's a lot easier to to be st stable, or you can do a robot that flies around like drones, etc. And so. You know, and um, and I get it, guys. There's still bulls in the market that love Tesla, and this is sort of an indicator of that. We're still not quite at the bottom, as long as that sort of frothy, crazy, fervorous, uh, irrational uh, money is still in. We're still not quite at the bottom, but we're getting closer because, like I said, some of this money is leaking out. Um, one of the things that is is telling of, of kind of where we are in the market and society is look at the price of homes, guys. So, you know, like, look at this. So this, for example, um, 1998, you know, price of home was 121,000. That's the median price of a home uh, sold. And then you go to 2007, 257, we had a bit of a dip, right? The 0809 crisis, you can see here, dipped down to say like 208. And I think that was like, looks like the bottom there was um, uh, quarter one, 2009, right? 208,000. And suddenly we just had this like massive rocketing of like home prices. <laughs> it just keeps going up and up and up. And uh, we're at uh, currently 440,000. And I mean, you guys can see this chart for yourself. And the question I'd ask you, do you think this is sustainable where we can just have like home prices just, you know, go up like a hockey stick? Is I, I, I'm sure you guys know it. it's not sustainable. And one of the things that is really important to understand is what's causing that sort of these bubble fervors, the Bitcoin stuff, the Tesla stuff. One thing I really want to point out to you guys is look at the Fed funds rate, right? So um, back here, back at um, 2009, this was essentially the the end of the uh, 08, 09 crash, the, the uh, financial debacle. And, and if you guys were uh, alive during the financial crisis, it was actually really scary. Uh, I graduated college uh, during this period. <laughs> there were no jobs anywhere. It was, it was pretty scary. Uh, but the dollar was really strong the same way that it is now. And um, essentially people just retreat to the dollar because they're just like, you know what? I'm selling all my crap. I'm, I'm holding dollars. And the, the, the trick is, right, when you can actually time the bottom over time, generally speaking, right, the, the market does do well. However, here's the big difference between 0809 and today is back then the Federal Reserve was actually keeping interest rates low, right? You look at this. So interest rates were low to stimulate the economy, essentially to to encourage borrowing, which is kind of funny, which is things like you don't want to do. But um, but 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 it's what they did because you know the idea was like, oh my God, we did things back going again. And the Fed fund rate was really low for quite a long time. They started raising it. You guys can see here. I just want you to go through this with me. Say in 2015, came up a little bit, and then we had the COVID thing, right? Market crashed back down, and so then they they lowered the interest rates again. And now we're raising them up again. And so the, 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 the sort of premise I want to introduce to you, and I want you guys just to look at these charts for yourself. It's easy to see. Uh, in 08, 09, they, they've, they just, from then, so what are we talking about? Like um, from 09 to now, which is what, 2022, like a 13-year period, something like that, where essentially interest rates have been you know zero for a long time. You guys can see it for yourself, right? And so money was, was free, essentially. And if you look at, go back, and you look at, um, uh, either Tesla or you look at either Bitcoin and um, yes, they've exploded. I mean, guys, I really know both Bitcoin and Tesla were essentially started when 
um, the Fed's funds rate was basically zero, okay? And now we're entering an environment where rates are going to go up. I already flashed it to you, but, um, you know, the talk is, is um, the Fed funds rate essentially is going to be looking at double of where we are now, uh, like, what, 45 to 5%. I've heard different numbers, but I'm just saying this is generally what we're, spe- uh, what we're talking about. And, you know, do you expect this crazy fervor of, of you know, uh, what we want to say speculative assets like your like your Bitcoin, your Tesla to continue to go up like crazy, or do you and do you expect housing prices to go up to continue to go up like crazy when interest rates are going up? The answer should be obviously no. It's not. It's not right. The cost of money is is, is clearly more. Um, the other thing too I want you to think about as well is like where is the stock market? These are something I, I always look at and I show you guys in the channel. So the S and P five hundred P ratio is currently at um, eighteen point one two. The mean, right? The average of this thing over time has been 16. So we're still trading high, according to this. Now we're definitely a lot lower than we were. And uh, you know, I remember back up here when it was like a, the high 30s or whatever. And uh, I was telling people like, man, this market looks way, way, way overvalued. And and obviously it wasn't hard to see, but you know, it's funny because I, I show people these numbers and, and you know, people in comments that are new to the market, that you know, probably kids that are in their 20s that just don't don't know. And, and it's fine. And you guys can learn. You gotta learn. Please, please learn. Um, is that if, if if all the world that you've ever known is been in a world of interest rates being zero. I mean, you're in a rude, you know, rude awakening when interest rates are suddenly, you know, five percent, and then you know, mortgages for many people are going to be like seven and eight percent kind of thing. Um, it it changes the landscape of what the cost of money is, and and essentially, you know, where people end up shifting their their assets around. And you know, this kind of chart, it's it just it's just very telling, right? Um, th- we were expensive, and so definitely we're not at the top anymore. But you know, there could still be more downside ahead. One of the things is is that. Um, because we look at home prices, right, going up like crazy still. And um, we also looked at uh, the, the S&P. And then also, too, this is the Buffett indicator, which I, I encourage you guys to take a look at for yourself. Um, this compares the essentially the price of all the stocks to market, the valuation uh, against the GDP, you know, how much is the country growing. And you can see here um, we're at a 19% above the trend line still, right? So this is the trend line here. You guys can see this right here. And uh, we're right there. Um, so we're definitely not the top, which is good, right? So the top's up here, right? But we're definitely not there. But, um, you know, you could certainly see some more downside ahead. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what the market's going to do. But uh, what, what I can tell you is, like, what to look for at least, right? So you, you're at least in the ball game. And, and one thing that's, you know, very telling is, is this is very real, guys, is, you know, people on TV, the, their job, right? They go on CNBC, and their job is to manage other people's money. And they make money from management fees. So they're always going to tell you the same thing. Oh, well, you know, no one can read the market, but just keep me money because, well, you know, I make money, frankly, from you. Give me money. <laughs> so so that, that's always going to be their message. And the, the reality also, too, is um, many people on YouTube, they're, they're, they're younger people or even older people who, frankly, just don't have any experience. And this is sort of why I do occasionally these sort of fraud videos to really point this stuff out. Because until these people wash out, um, you know, until... Until all these people have lost all their money, essentially, the market still has a little bit of froth and fervor in it. And um, this is sort of why I want you to get attuned to is like, look at real numbers that I'm looking at and sort of why I think, OK, still sub seems a little bit expensive or, hey, at least we're not at the top, that kind of thing, um, because it'll it'll help you much better to understand things that you'll know it's not all random. Right. And the the general theory behind this stuff is that markets tend to trade along the mean. Right. They, they, they tend to be like a rubber band if if, if things go to you know hot to the upside, it'll come back down, right? If if you pull on the other way, things go down to, to the low side, it'll come back up. But they tend to trade along their means. So keep an eye on these things, please. Um, the other thing too, which is interesting, this is a um, a sort of this is going back to the house thing. This is like a median uh, household income ratio to the to the uh, to the price of houses. So basically, the general gist of it is is that. Um, uh, typically, uh, typically uh, the price of a house compared to a median income in USA is about five times, right? So, for example, just make it real simple because uh, uh, math is easier that way. If um, if the average you know income is say or median income is say a uh, hundred thousand, then you would expect houses to cost five hundred thousand, right? Something like that. So, like a five to one. So currently, um, back to the housing bubble back in you can see this uh, 05, It reached to a ratio of uh, seven point oh three, right? So, the price of houses were seven times greater than the uh, median income and um, currently <laughs> this is real look at this uh, as of june 1st 2022 um, you look at the price of homes compared to median income in the usa and uh, i'm reading uh, 7.78 uh, i mean th- there's no other way to put it man uh, pr- house, uh, price houses are really expensive compared to how much money people make now we're definitely in a different era and the reason why i'm gonna say that different era is because i i've been saying this over and over again i, I feel like that the 
um, big corporations and the big money, or like, for example, those YouTuber meet Kevin who want to come in and buy up single family homes and turn them into rentals. I think that kind of stuff should be made illegal because essentially it's driving regular people uh, out of the home market and making it impossible. And I mean, I mean, seriously impossible for, for regular people to, to buy homes and have home ownership, which I think is a fundamental um, uh, thing, uh, especially in the, the U.S. democracy, to two things. One is to be able to start your own business and two, be able to buy a home. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say to, to that, I, that I want families to be able to do these two things. And when, when you when you have this big problem of like, Either your Walmart's pushing out small mom and pop stores, or like again, I think that Main Street is a fundamental thing of the of the of the American democracy and just the system. When you have Walmart pushing that kind of stuff out, or you have like your your big essentially money, essentially like essentially meet Kevin. I'm just telling you the truth. Like those kind of people saying, "Oh, we're gonna go buy up all these homes and, and we're gonna turn them all into rentals." Uh, I, I just think that this kind of stuff should be illegal um, because it, it's a really damaging to the, to the, the system and the way of life. Um, and it's it's a political thing that should be talked about, but very, very few politicians will ever talk about why, because they're bought off by the big money to, to not talk about it, essentially. Um, and, you know, this number right here is probably the most alarming number to me is is, is that just home prices are through the roof. Um, and I'd love to guys, hear you guys' opinion on that, especially in the markets that you're in. So we'll see if things cool off. I think they're going to because, again, um, interest rates have been low for a very long time, and now they're they're really sky skyrocketing. Um, you know, like seventy five basis points like every month it feels like, and uh, it's not it's not hyperbole. It's just like what they're doing, and they're gonna do it again. Is the next one is the rumor. Um, also, too, um, you know things things are gonna really change as well to where I expect unemployment to go up. I've been saying that for a long time. We're currently at three point seven. Um, some economists and the Fed they're expecting four point four next year, as we talked about before. Um, I think it could reach like a five or a six, but I don't know. I can't tell you 100, but I, I do know that unemployment needs to go up to include down inflation. Um, if you take a look at this, so this is back in, um, you guys can look at these charts for yourself, but um, back in 2009, uh, it reached 10 percent. And then you can take a look at this, the peak of the or the um, kind of the worst of the uh, 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 COVID situation is like reached like 14 percent in April of 2020. You know, currently at 3.7, just feels like we can definitely go up a little bit more. And again, we need the cool inflation. And the last thing is, you know, remember we, we kind of premise this was, will there be a crash in October? I don't think it matters if there's a crash in October or not, to be honest, because these things take a long time. Now, yes, and this is there's two things you can get from this chart. This is the NASDAQ over a long time. And I, again, I lived through the dot-com bubble and I lived through 0809. So I was always bearish because I know these things can take a long time. And, and you know, if you take a look at back in 2000, um, and this is back in the time when we had dial-up internet to, to do stock trades and stuff. It was, it was really fun. It's a very different era than, than today where, you know, you can do lightning stuff really fast. And back then there used to be fees to trade. It was like eight bucks or something like that. And um, basically, you know, you can see this. This is back March 3rd, 2000, which is roughly around the top. And do it for yourself, guys. Look at the NASDAQ. And you can see like, okay, um, it went down in a couple of years, 67%, the NASDAQ. And then even by uh, 0809, it was down like 70%. So that's like a, you know, a nine-year period. It's, it's a long time. And say didn't recover until like around, you know, let's see if we can find it here, the exact, I think it's like 15 years, something like that. Yeah, it's like like around 15 years is in that range. Now, you know, it's the thing is, it's like that is so far out. No one no one knows exactly what's going to happen. There could be any number of things that happen in the next 15 years. Um, and so that's why essentially why people stay invested in the market because you don't know. But there's a couple things I want you to, to get from looking all this stuff together. So one is it appears that things are still expensive too. It appears there are still frothy things happening, like Tesla building robots and trying to sell you, you know, twenty thousand dollar robots. Um, the other thing is too is is that you still have those sort of like you know uh, either your stock mos or your Larry Jones or those you know whatever uh, random you know YouTuber solving money problem dude you know pumping up stuff and and essentially when you get these people in backwards baseball hats or people with I mean I'm being real like um, no education you're telling you oh my God you got to buy this this Shiba and you got to buy this crypto. You know there's still a problem, but those people are washing out. Um, the interest rates keep going up, but the, the kind of concerning stuff is when you see, you know, UK government saying, "Oh my God, we're going to take a gamble because things look bad." And the other thing is too is um, when you see that the uh, every time we get news from China, it just seems like things are getting worse. And I feel like that Evergrande situation could be way worse than anyone knows. And so you know, I'm keeping an eye on that, and also too, of course, the, the war with Russia and Ukraine. And so, you know, is it? It's irrelevant to me if it's going to crash in October because I just feel like. At the moment, things are bearish for sure. 
Um, and finding the bottom is tough, so no one really knows. Um, but if, at least if you can have an idea of where we are, and that's why I show you these charts, you'll have a better sense. And the reason why people do stay somewhat invested is because you, you, you can't time it that easily. It's just not that easy because when things roll, they'll just start rolling and things will happen again. But I don't know exactly when that's going to be. And so that's why you always want to diversify. Keep some in cash, right? Keep some in, in stocks, keep some in bonds, et cetera, and, and do what makes sense. Um, at the moment, it, it seems like a lot of people are sitting on cash. This is the smart money. They're also grabbing some bonds. And they do have some stocks, but they have you know exposure to things that uh, are profitable. And um, you know this is why I keep telling you guys, like for me, uh, I wouldn't be putting my money in companies that are in debt and losing money. I have no hope of ever getting that money back. And that's why I mentioned like stuff like AMC until you know these things basically go to zero, then that'll signal kind of the bottom. And right now we're still kind of watching of like, okay, are people still willing? And yes, and I get it, guys. But I get it. Like if you bought Tesla back, you know, ten years ago, you'd be spectacular. But you know, the idea that if you buy it today, that you're going to have the same performance as you did ten years ago is just simply, frankly, not true, right? And this is something that because like I read in comments, people say, "Oh, Chris, you're so stupid." This is you know, buying Tesla now is like buying Apple in the 1980s. And it's like no. Uh, buying Apple 19s would be more like buying Tesla back in the uh, 2010. <laughs> that's more, that's more realistic, and and so that this is sort of why, you know, I, I know we're not quite exactly at the bottom because there are still people, uh, you know, believing these sort of high hyperboles. Um, but you know, the the reality is is that you can do well in the market and things like that. But you have to keep a level head, um, stay diversified because you, you just don't know. So I just don't ever recommend anyone put all their eggs in one basket and. Um, you know, pay attention to, to kind of what's going on in the indicators that I'm looking at and hang out in this channel and we'll try to help each other. So that's my thoughts on this stuff. Um, I hope all these things are, are, are clear on sort of what I look at and um, hopefully that it all makes sense. And, and again, I, I emphasize for you guys um, to look at these charts for yourself. And, and so you have a general sense of like, OK, I, I, I may not be able to time the bottom, but at least I know I'm not at the top. And the, at least I'm not, you know, like throwing my stuff at like the companies that are unprofitable and losing money. Right. Don't be doing that. Um, you know, that's just not a, a good strategy. And, you know, this is the, this is the thing that you want to, you want to understand is, is that, um, investing is, is a long, a long thing, right? Like I showed you how it could take 15 years for the market to come back. It could take five years, right? It could take, you know, two or three years, but it's, it's not like you're going to get rich overnight and stuff like that. And so people, you promising these kind of things, it makes me really uncomfortable. And that's why, um, I'm not going to be selling, you know, zero to millionaire course. <laughs> that. Um, yeah, generally speaking, and this, and this is just an easy tip whenever someone asks me, hey, what do you think about this YouTuber or that YouTuber? And the, the fundamental thing is like, if they were, if they were selling you a course or they're selling you a Discord, stuff like that, that's usually a red flag. That's easy, easy tell. So anyway, hopefully all of this stuff is, is useful and helpful for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these things and um, I'll catch you in the next video.